Hello, I only know HTML, CSS, and this much JavaScript. But you know what? I really make a nice living off of those two and a half things, maybe two and a quarter. Let's talk about it after the intro. Welcome for the first time or back to another DLJ Works video. And yes, you heard me correctly. I only know HTML, CSS, and a smidget of JavaScript about 0.25% and I make a pretty good living. Now, you may be asking yourself, how is that even possible? What is this guy even talking about? What, he doesn't know Angular, he doesn't know React, he doesn't know Vue.js, he doesn't know any of these frameworks, he doesn't know modular, blah, 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 like CoffeeZilla, CoffeeJS, whatever. No, I don't know any of those things. I, I, I have no inkling about frameworks and yet and still, here I am, working at a job where I feel like I'm value and I make a huge difference. And you need to probably watch my last video that I actually did about being a website manager because it's pretty much the role that I'm actually fulfilling right now. So go back, watch that video, get informed in terms of the position I'm actually doing, then come back to this video and I'll explain to you. But this video is taking a component of that and really talking about it because I was really thinking about it and I was like, yeah, I only know HTML and CSS. And, and honestly, if you go deep on HTML and CSS and really using JavaScript, because for me, I only use JavaScript when necessary. But if you go deep on those two things, you can actually get more than likely an entry level job or probably even better. And, and the actual position that I'm in is beyond entry level. It may just be a step up, step up, because it takes both of the worlds, web, being a website manager or just being a web designer and a web developer and it brings fragments of both of those positions into this role but when you're a website manager your focus is going to be more so on communication all right your role is going to be communicating with people being able to talk about technical aspects customer service business related things marketing while also doing the web design and development stuff on a very small on a much smaller scale that's what being a website manager is that's what the role is that i'm actually doing right now when i first got started in web design and development i actually just got into it because of html and css and i never left that home base and i really never really had any reason to actually leave it the other skills that i actually acquired being in this profession being in this field is and i guess you can call them We'll just say I, I've learned some other programs. We'll just say it like that. I don't know if you want to call them skills, but I've learned Photoshop. I learned Adobe Illustrator. I had to learn video editing. Henceforth, these videos that I'm actually making on YouTube, and I'm not going to even sit up here and act like I'm just this master editor. I do it because it's a necessary evil. It is a necessity. Hopefully, when I get to the point to where I can just film these and I can pass them on to somebody who just whose sole focus is crafting beautiful stories within the editing module, then... I'll go ahead and do that. But right now, it's something that I have to do on my own. So it's a means to an end. That's what I see it as. But nevertheless, it's a skill that I picked up. And that's one of the things that I want to encourage people out there who are actually in this field that you explore, that you do branch off. Now, but you still want to have a focus. If you're trying to learn coding, you want to kind of see what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are and what your interests are going to gravitate more towards. And I'm only giving you this advice based on my own personal experience because I thought maybe this could be something that helps you out. So if you're going deep on HTML, learn learn the basics of the syntax. Learn how the actual structure, the lexical structure actually is when you're putting together tags, when you're typing out your HTML. Learn how the CSS communicates with certain tags, with the, the language, selectors, properties, values. You, you want to, these are the things that you want to actually learn because honestly, if you can learn HTML and CSS on a deep level and that actually transition, that, that translates over to when you're learning things such as WordPress, when you're learning other platforms such as Wix, such as Squarespace, such as Weebly. And I, those are also other platforms too that I had to learn and they offer you ways to embed custom code into there and actually just learning how the, the hierarchies work when you're actually building a website actually makes using those platforms a lot easier. I was actually just watching a video not too long ago in terms of, I think the name of it was Aka Demind or something. I, I can't remember. But anyway, the video was Wix versus web developers. And it was a really interesting video because I did 
that topic a while back in terms of don't fear these platforms because you, we still need web developers. My thing is, how are you, even if you can just use a drag and drop builder, you don't really have the fundamentals. Like what you're missing that you would get if you become a web designer, even if you become a web developer, is you're missing some fundamentals that go into just taking some block elements and just dragging them on top of each other and calling that a website. Like you're missing the psychology, you're missing the why, you're, you're missing a lot of, of key things, key components that go into building a website. You have to think about how is your visitor going to come on this website? What do you want them to see the minute that they hit the homepage? And what, what's the strategy? What's the, the content strategy? Why would you have this functionality? Is this animation going to distract from what my customer clicks on? And is it going to add to it? These are questions that you have to ask yourself. And if you're just vying to learn just the platform without learning the behind the scenes stuff, the vision, if you're a web designer, visual hierarchy, typography, those elements, if you're a web developer, learning what I'm talking about right now, just starting with HTML and CSS, and many people may not call that actual programming, but who cares right now? It's still part of becoming a web developer. It's, it's, it's the entry level that you have to get in. But if you're not learning those things, then you're just, you're just a bystander that's just playing around with the platform if you don't know those things. So yes, I've learned, I spent probably about maybe my the first 10 years. Actually, the reason I haven't dove deep into just getting a career and I can't speak on me just like being a Christian and saying that I went to this boot camp and three months later I had a job. No, when I actually got started in web design and development, I actually got into it wanting to learn HTML and CSS and I went to DeVry. You probably saw my video, my DeVry story from there. But after I left the I actually got a teaching job and I actually love teaching so much. I was just doing the web design stuff on the side, making some money here and there. But really, I was also just taking on projects, too, and just really just trying to get my skill level up on the quiet side, learning why websites are made, just really learning the why behind a lot of this stuff. But I wasn't really tripping about trying to get a job. I wasn't, and there wasn't a sense of urgency for me to leave teaching. I wasn't that person that was saying like, oh, these kids are horrible. I, I got to get away from them. Like they're teaching is hell. They, they do teaching so wrong. That wasn't my, that wasn't my experience. It's, it's a shared experience from a lot of people, but that wasn't my experience that I shared. And I actually love the students that I worked with. And even I even got into I even got a technology application certification so I can be able to teach students web design and web development. And I, to be honest with you, it wasn't fun trying to teach them that because really a lot of kids don't like to read. If you're trying to teach them code and you're trying to teach them how to analyze, reading has to be a big part of that. It's not, you're not writing out formulas, you're not writing out mathematical formulas, 7X minus 7A will produce this code for you. It's not what you're doing. You're actually probably doing more English literature when you're coding where you're having to read and analyze and break down and see why this logically connects to this one Yeah, it's, there's some parallels in terms of algebra and of the verbiage maybe but the way that you're actually breaking down and reading and analyzing the actual code I want to say is more literary than anything and a lot of people a lot of the students just didn't want to do that so it was a very painful experience but neither here nor there I was teaching and then the good Lord opened the door for me to actually get into a position to where I can actually utilize the skills that I've been developing for the past almost a decade. I just got started at this job in 2019. So just it, it's taking uh, some time. It's something that I'm not complaining about. All I can tell you is that if you want to have a faster experience, then put your head down. Even uh, throughout what's going on right now, just put your head down, continue to build, continue to have projects, get your skill level up. That would be my best advice to you out there right now. You can focus and do that on HTML and CSS. They need people out there to do email setups, to build email templates that's just HTML and CSS based. You can build forms. You can actually pull some JavaScript code from maybe another coder and actually plug that into a form that you're designing on the front end just with HTML and CSS with all the the, trend, the, the HTML, the CSS animations is what I'm trying to get at. The, the advancements in CSS, you really can actually do some really cool things in terms of animations, building 
like I've seen a guy like make a whole Pac-Man game just out of CSS and really that's where the math actually gets involved because you have to actually determine. I think web design has more math than development because you have to actually determine um, the curvatures. You have to kind of figure out how things are going to rotate. You have to plug those numbers in. You have to calculate distances. That's where math comes into play. And a lot of people don't talk about that, but that's more in the web design part where you're talking about sizes. You're talking about spatial values and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I, but if you if you just learn HTML and CSS, you, you'll be surprised in terms of how far you can go. And I guarantee you that if you make some really cool projects with it and do things that people haven't done before, I would advise to actually research the landscape, see what's out there, see what people are already doing with HTML and CSS, and maybe see how you can add to it or take it and make it your own and add that to your project Then you can actually just present that to whoever you're trying to get hired by. All right. So that's going to be it for this video. There's something that you feel like I didn't cover. Sometimes I may just get to talking and I could be completely off topic, but I've taken HTML and CSS. I've over the years, it's been about a decade. I've taken on projects, websites, making little games here, making little things here with that. And this is paid off in the long run with big, big dividends. So I can be a testimony and say that it is truly possible. I am living, breathing example that you can actually do so. Um, like, share, subscribe. I'd love to talk to you in the comment section. DLJ Works. See y'all in the next video. God bless y'all.